Fire credit, uh, what will, uh, it, it depends who's going to control the House, the Senate, the President. Uh, um, on one side, personally, I almost hope they don't because I think we're in such a hot market right now. And if they throw those credits out there, it's going to drive up the lower end market so much. And it's going to be a nightmare. And I think any real estate people on here right now are familiar with how crazy the market is right now. And if there's all this extra tax credit money, um, that was last done back in the recession. So, but I have heard about that, but I'm not sure. And I'm not sure how much legs that'll actually have. Yeah. Cause I was wondering, you know, you, you get asked this, you know, these kinds of questions all the time about, uh, you know, cause the rumor mill goes around about the tax credit and if they're going to reenact that or, you know, revive it or whatever, and to what extent. And uh, one of the things that, you know, I always caution people on is that, you know, it comes with caveats, right? It comes with, you can't be like a day late on your house payment and, you know, oh yeah, X and Z, you know, you gotta, and you gotta follow their rules or you have to pay it back in full like yesterday. And really, <laughs> really, the, really the last time that they had the refundable credits, uh, were at the end of George Bush and Obama, and we were in the middle of a housing, and it really was to stimulate home sales. I, I think, I don't think they need to do anything to stimulate home sales right now. So I hope they don't do that. But, and it was plagued with fraud, and there's a lot of, uh, there was a lot of opportunities for people to do bad things uh, in that. It was kind of a, big money grab. It did help a lot of people and I think stimulate the economy, but I don't know that we need that one right now. Um, have a question here. Uh, uh, wholesale a home for 85,000 as an individual and paid 35,000 in fees at closing. How much of the 50K profits taxable? Uh, so I'm assuming that the home was purchased for eighty five thousand, and then um, then you had costs of thirty five. So generally, the fifty thousand is going to be your profit. And if it was a short term, it's generally going to be um, when we were talking about ordinary activity, um, which is going to qualify under uh, for ordinary income tax rates plus the self employment tax rates. And it may, that definitely may be something worth looking at um, the scenario of an LLC taxed as an S corporation, because there might be a little bit more planning to help reduce the exposure on that 50,000. Then further, if I flip homes on retail in LLC and roll over the proceeds in future flips and one buy and hold rental, uh, uh, which business structure. So really that flipping the homes um, w again would be the ordinary activity and definitely an LLC taxed as an S corporation. Um, if I was wholesaling houses at that dollar amount and flipping houses, I'd probably have one entity uh, either an S corporation or an LLC taxed as an S corporation, and then uh, start planning there. In that situation, sounds like there's already 50,000 potentially of income. And then there's also how the flipping income. So let's just say in this example, maybe the net profit is $100,000. If you're not an S corporation and you're an individual or an LLC, you're gonna be subject to the ordinary income tax rates plus self-employment. That same 100,000 through an S corporation is not gonna be subject to self-employment, but then we do walk the question of a, what's called a reasonable compensation. So there may be a W-2 that's needed, but maybe a lower amount would qualify as reasonable co uh, comp compensation. So uh, um, that's where just um, really being able to uh, 
be able to manage that. Uh, wouldn't 100% eliminate it, but I think there's a lot of dollars to be able to um, be able to plan and strategize for that. Um, again, I think that $85,000 example would be worth some planning and set up. Um, and that's a perfect example that I would say if somebody gave me those same numbers and they were 8,500 and 3,500 and a $5,000 profit, an LLC may do the trick and may not be worth the extra tax return. So um, uh, hope that helps and um, explains that um, side of it. Any other questions? One thing, um, I, I remember Mark and I were talking uh, um, when we were organizing uh, this, even, uh, I think you had brought it up, Mark, sometimes people have uh, prior tax situations and um, as far as debts and situations with the IRS, um, um, one thing I bring up, a lot of times trying to get everything worked on, um, understand your situation, uh, depending on the dollar amounts, there's offers and compromises in different situations. I've had clients that haven't filed in years past or have had some prior tax bills. Uh, uh, definitely something to look at. Uh, the IRS right now has some, um, I believe it's called a fresh start program. Um, I don't work on um, a lot of the, uh, those. Be uh, one of the things personally, I will say um, there, the IRS takes into account age, future earning potential. They take into a number of factors when they're working with somebody. It's something, um, and just if anyone ever runs into a situation, want to mention that, uh, discuss, um, happy to, to discuss it with anybody. Um, but um if let's say I'm 20 years old and I owe the IRS some money, it's not in their interest really to settle with me. If I'm 80 years old and I owe them some money, my future earning potential is different. They take that into account. Um, I, I, um, I, I, if anybody on, on this has that situation, put it out there, be happy to talk with them. My personal experience in uh, sometimes these phone numbers you see on TV, we settle for pennies on the dollar, uh, call us and send us. Watch for those as my per personal advice. A lot of times they're attorneys and have fees. There are good ones and there are bad ones out there. Um, I just put that out there. Um, but um, a lot of what we've covered today, I think is really so everyone can plan for taxes and not jam themselves up when they're in a business. Um, I think there's a few realtors on here that get 1099s. Uh, definitely something to plan for with your taxes. Um, when you're getting a 1099, try to track your expenses. I have had realtors uh, come to me, haven't filed in a few years and don't have any expenses and have done some deals. And really, the sooner we can get get a handle on it um, in that situation, because 1099 income is subject to self-employment. And let's say I had $20,000 in commissions, the tax bill on that can be scary with no expenses and three years late. So um, I bring that up, um, just some of the things I've run into working with people. And I think all of you are on here to uh, try to not run into these traps um, and these different landmines. Um, but uh, 
feel free to reach out if anybody ever has any questions or anything. Uh, but IRS generally doesn't go away and sooner work on it or be able to strategize for the future, uh, you're better off. Yeah, that's good advice. Uh, and I'm speaking for myself now. I've been in some really sticky situations. And I, at one point in my life, had to do an offer and compromise. And your advice is very good. <clears throat> at that point in my life, I owed $230,000 to the IRS. And through an offer and compromise, I was able to get it down to 30000 But they put you under strict scrutiny after you reach that agreement where you've got to file everything and do it to the letter of the law for X number of years. And uh, that's uh, when I discovered my wife was my best partner <laughs> and, and when she kept everything straight and uh, she's still my partner and she's the one that runs everything. So that, that's really good advice. You know, when you get in trouble, the worst person you can talk to is yourself. You know, they say that when you're talking to yourself, you're talking to an idiot. So you want to put stuff in dialogue and get hold of other people that have been in that situation or talk to a professional like you, Frank. So, uh, and I, and, 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 and Mark, you bring up a point depending on the balance. Cause I've had, I've had people tell me they owe five or $10,000 and can I do an offer? Well, when you look at the professional fees, your future earning potential, uh, let's set up a payment plan and I'm not going to rip you off and take your fees to try yeah. to get what I can tell you will probably most likely get rejected. Uh, yeah. uh, so the ones I've done have been very substantial and they have been successful, but they've been different cases, but uh, a payment plan. And I just bring that up because I've run into it with realtors, real estate investors people that did a buy and hold cash out refinance 1031 exchange and then got out of a deal and realized they got no cash and had a big recapture and didn't know where the money went for the last 30 years. Right. So. Yeah. And then everybody needs to know there's life after all that. So, Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, so just get in dialogue with the right people and work through it, but taking no action is not a good a action to take. <laughs> One other question came in. Um, is it a good idea in terms of taxes to put children as owners of the LLC for rental properties? And in the future, uh, they'll be owners of the properties uh, title on houses um, under LLC. So, um, so, so generally, if you add your children to your LLC, they're not going to be direct owners of the houses. They'll be just partners in the LLC. Um, Again, if you're passing assets to the children, um, it, it putting them in, on the LLC is a good way to transfer. But keep in mind if you're if you're going to, let's say I'm going to own a property over all my life and pass it to my kids at my death, I would rather not have them on my LLC and have them inherit my LLC upon my death so they get a step up in basis. And effectively, I control that asset over my life. If I bring my kids into it, I may have responsibility um, to let them manage. If it's me trying to teach my kids and grow the business, I would say, by all means, have them join the business and um if you're all working together, the family business is going to grow bigger and stronger. Um, so I would advise that. But um, if you're putting them on just to get, get some money to the kids, also be advised as they get older, if kids get married, that you could effectively have a family business, your business that's impacted if the kids are ever divorced or run into something, I bring that up. Uh, but if you're transferring assets, you can add them or if you're growing. But if, if I already own half of dad's business, when dad dies, I don't get a step up on the half that I already own. I only get a step up on the half that I don't own. So um, if I, um, I it, um, it's, it's a way to 
grow. Another part of the question is transfer to S or C Corp. If it's buy and hold property, I'd advise usually not in an S or a C Corp. Um, I because of the cash out refis, or if my dad adds me to an S Corp and he has rental properties in there, I get a step up on the S Corp interest, but not the rental property. So I would rather inherit dad's rental property through an LLC. I get the step up and then I can go refinance it the day after he dies and take cash out tax free. Um, just looking through that way. If I'm, uh, but I, my personal advice is buy and hold an, an LLC taxed as a partnership. And if you're going to add kids or family members to the business, uh, do it because you're growing the business or you're trying to transfer it. Uh, right now with the estate tax rules, um, you effectively, everything can pass through to heirs outside of estate tax that's below $24 million, uh, depending on current tax law. Uh, I do have clients that have kids in the business and there's different gifting strategies um, in situations that are in excess of that amount. So it's something to maybe look at closer to add the kids to the business, but look at a little closer what the, the underlying reason to add them. Hope that answered the question and okay, but I think kind of winding down. Um, um, and if, again, if any questions come up, feel free, connect with me. Uh, we can discuss further or connect with me on some of the social platforms, uh, Frank at C or CPA nerd.com and, uh, go to CPA nerd.com to connect and. Yeah, I think we're through everything. I just want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, keep checking the meetup. Uh, meet we'll have some new events coming up. We're working on having uh, some wholesalers come on and talk about how they got started in the business. And I've got a, a real estate attorney coming that's going to talk about eviction process and um, you know setting your limited liability companies up just from a legal standpoint. And uh, we just really appreciate everybody being on. Absolutely. And Frank, yeah. uh, maybe after uh, all the dust has settled in 2021, we can have you come back and talk about the tax updates. Okay. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. I, there, I've got some stuff I want you to talk about too, but we'll talk about th that later. Guys, I really appreciate you being on. So, and uh, don't be afraid to, to make an appointment with Frank and talk to him. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, Frank. Thank you.